Hello everybody. I hope uh, all of you are safe and healthy in your home or in your lab. Now is the most important thing. Um, okay, I'm going to introduce myself. Uh, I'm uh, Sandy Dalmau. I'm a dental technician uh, for more than 30 years. I have my own laboratory uh, focusing on digital flow. The name of the laboratory is Digital, digital Made. Um, uh, so let's go. Uh, so let's uh, talk about the uh, zirconium and, bi and biomic. And at the beginning, uh, we must think in in which kind of uh, zirconium we're going to use. Uh, Monolithic zirconium, but uh, which one? Uh, which one are you going to use? Uh, generally, uh, I use only two kinds of zirconium. Uh, normally it's uh, HT and uh, 3D Pro. 3D Pro is for aesthetics works and uh, HT for the rest, maybe in uh, posteriors or something like that. Generally they have a poor aesthetics at HT, but uh, not always, not always, because uh, with a little work of a stain, uh, internal stains with infiltration and uh, with um, makeup, we can uh, uh, we can uh, do a, a very nice uh, restorations like this. This is HT, uh, only with a little work of uh, infiltration with uh, uh, magic coloring. Uh, after that, we're going to uh, we're going to see the technique for for the coloring for the um, coloring in in a green stage and. Um, okay, this is, is, is easy to, to uh, have a, a nice result with uh, HT and with uh, infiltration in, in green stage. Um, commonly I use that when, uh, when the patient needs uh, a strong restoration. Uh, HT is uh, more stronger than 3D Pro, but uh, um, HT have more translucency. That's the reason that I use in in uh, in uh, all the aesthetics works uh, like this with a uh, big restorations. At the beginning, we're going to talk about the uh, monolithics in in uh, in uh, in a single crown, but uh, I show to you after after one or three one two or three cases of the monolithics in. In anterior, I'm going to show you the technique for the and the workflow for the um, big restorations. Uh, we can see now uh, here I apply uh, the the white aesthetics and um, and the pink uh, the 3D glazing in a pink aesthetics. Later we we're going to talk about in detail how uh, we uh, stratify the gum in the in the final of the presentation. Um, this is the uh, ready for the furnace, the rehabilitation ready for the furnace and a big maxillar uh, work. And this is the uh, final result only with makeup in the in the white aesthetics and uh, makeup uh, of pink gum uh, of biomic in the in the maxillar. Um, after that, we're going to talk about in in, in the tab. Okay, however, that that type of uh, restorations I work here with uh, metal connection. Never work on implants. Uh, the zirconia connection. Uh, um, uh, whenever work on implants, the zirconia connection is made with uh, cemented metal connection with metal abutments. Uh, uh, we can connect uh, correct uh, button relations or to also taking or work away from the implant connection connection no um, I never connect the, the zirconium with the with the with the implant directly ever I work with uh, that type of uh, metal connection and we can uh, choose the angulation and correct some things um, Okay, the CD Pro for me is is one of the best, maybe the best zirconium that I ever proved. Uh, I work uh, commonly in my in my in my workly day 
I work with the uh, 3D Pro because uh, I have a very strong resistation and in uh, um, higher than uh, 1050 uh, from 600 in the in the in the top. Um, for implants, for restoration, for implants is very interesting because uh, when we are going to cement the metal connection, uh, we have in the in the cervical zone we have uh, 1050 megapascals. Uh, it's very strong for me, and I'm I'm very comfortable with that. And uh, the translucency is uh, is higher than 50 percent in the in the incisal area. The middle and the cervical area is uh, from 43 to 57 in the in the incisal area. For aesthetic works are a very very good material. One of the best thicones that I ever proved. Okay, if I present a work like this. Uh, it is difficult to know where are the crowns, the banner, the implants, or whatever I I going to do there. Uh, um, is if it if it is difficult to see, is because of correct work of provisionalization, transmission of information like impression, photo, etc., and the sign has been carried out. Look that this is a work placement in the in the mouth, and you can see here. Uh, uh, in the middle we have uh, uh, circular crowns in the laterals uh, in the 12 where we have a feldespatic uh, veneer and in the 22 have um, a circonium pillar okay uh, we're going to talk about uh, how to uh, make the transmission of that information of the of the soft tissue to the technician and this is a uh, very important to design or a structure. I'm going to show you with, with two cases of uh, a single crown, monolithic single crown. Uh, we're going to reproduce the emergency, emergency profile and the uh, clinicians take to us uh, a, a, a special impression with uh, uh, with uh, with uh, uh, customized abatement. For impression, um, is is uh, important uh, thinking that because if we don't do that, if we don't do a, a customized uh, uh, abatement for the impression, it's impossible to transmit the the, the real state of the uh, of the papilla of the in the mouth of the patient to the model to the master model. It's very easy to do that. It's only five minutes in the in the in the dental office. Like this, in the first step, I, um, uh, we take out the, the provisional of the mouth of the patient and screw in a, in a, in a lab replica, in an implant replica of the lab, and put all that thing, uh, the provisional and the replica, inside the block of uh, uh, silicon. After that, we cut the top of the of that block, and uh, we screw the uh, provisional, and we have this. The, the replica is inside the block of the silicon, and now we place and screw the uh, uh, impression abatement. Uh, when we have that, we uh, refill with uh, with a photo uh, material, and that's all. Here we, we are photo the, the material, a composite or something like that, and we obtain that that personal uh, customer uh, custom abatement. And now we have the profile, the emergency profile, exactly that in the mouth of the patient. Look, this is the emergency profile in the mouth. This is the, the abatement, and now this is the profile and you can see the master model is exactly is the same. We have a, a very exactly master model, and now we can uh, begin to design the structure for for that uh, for that um, for that canine. This is a, a twenty-three, and now we can uh, we here uh, you can see uh, how the government and the patient uh, and the model are exactly. Look that. If we compare 
the the customized uh, copying or uh, 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 standard copying in the left side we can see the standard in the right side you can see the uh, customize the uh, is a little bit ischemic the, the the gum is a little bit uh, the, the gum is a little bit ischemic we lose information in less than five minutes less than five minutes um, now we have a master model and uh, we're going to uh, make a, a silicon index and whatsapp uh, with with wax uh, make a study wax up and a silicon index or uh, we can um, and and we can uh, uh, make the scan of that that whatsapp or we can do in uh, uh, directly in uh, digitalization of the model we can uh, design uh, directly in the model or we can make with whatsapp i prefer make with WhatsApp because because I control better the form, the contour, everything. You know, here you can see the emergency profile. And this is the uh, the final design in a, in a virtual WhatsApp. Or and here we have the uh, monolithic with uh, with a three D uh, with a three D uh, glaze and. We control the form, the texture. Uh, we can make uh, final adjustments, you know. And for color, form, and texture, you can see the specular uh, image, and is the same. Is the same like, like in the other side. Like Thirteen is like a twenty-three. After that, we have make polish and and glaze and make a polish. Uh, uh, after that, we're going to talk about uh, the technique for the for the makeup and the 3D and all all that things. No, yeah, I only show you uh, one case for uh, to reproduce the emergency profile and how to design the the, the piece. No, uh, after that, we're going to talk about the the technique for for the makeup and the glazing. This is a final contour, anatomical control, and the work placement in the mouth. Um, the the communication between between the clinic and the and the lab is it's okay and the and the soft tissue it's okay the color is okay everything is okay now uh, in my opinion is um, the twenty three is a little bit uh, in my opinion is a little high value but uh, integrates perfectly I think so is a good result. Monolithics only with a little bit of stain with uh, 3D glaze and polish and that's all, you know. And now I'm going to show you how to design the structure. Uh, and now I show you um, uh, before I show you how to transmit the information for the clinic to the to the lab, and now I'm going to show you how to design the structure. This is the case of another one, uh, the 11 uh, have the broken root, as you can see here, and it's going to take out and place the implant in, in uh, take out the root, the broken, the broken teeth, is, uh, the root is broken, and place an implant. Uh, uh, I, I think the ever the implants uh, maybe um should be should be uh place let uh, play uh, uh, place uh, i think they going to the implant is going to uh, place uh protectively protectively pro uh, sorry protectively uh, surgery guide why because when we're going to uh, make the restoration of the 11 we need we need a predictability about the prosthesis. If the implant, uh, if if the clinical players um, the implant uh, uh, thinking in the in the prosthesis is better to, uh, after to make the restoration. Okay, here you can see the provisionalization maybe for more than five weeks, and uh, this is the day of the the first provisional. After that, uh, we're going to uh, uh, remodel 
the, the emergency profile you can see here how I can um, uh, recontour the, the emergency profile to uh, reproduce the Senate of the Papilla in the 11 because the uh, 21 have a, a, a very strange Senate in the in the, it's not in the center it's, it's very um, uh, is is in a distal area, and we we need we we need to make a provisional with a little pressure in that in that point because when when we make pressure, um, when when we make pressure, the uh, the gum is going to be upper. When and we make a concave uh, zone as when with a deep pressure, the gum the 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 papilla is going to be down. No? like this. You can see here, it's not exactly, but it's very, very similar. The zenith is in, in, in now is, is very similar to make the final restoration. Okay, after that, we're going to copy the uh, emergency profile with the, with the provisional. Uh, take out the provisional and make um, a scan of that, uh, of that, uh, that teeth, uh, 11, and we scan the mouth and the provisional, the provisional out and uh, inside uh, the placement. Here we have the provisional and now we have the, the emergency profile exactly at the provisional and we can design the final restoration of the crown of that uh, 11 because now we have this this uh, emergency profile that that have we have that uh, that provision that emergency profile in our master model, you know, and now we can design the eleven in a digital model. Here you can see the emergency profile of the eleven is the same like the provisional crown, like this. You can see the senate. Here is the implant replica, and we design the crown, make a specular image of the 21, and we create that pillar, that 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 crown, because that crown have in in the subcritical zone, uh, they have uh, all the zirconium in contact with, uh, like a, like a bottleneck, you know very very narrow near the implant and going to be bigger in the in the critical zone in the critical area and uh, recreate the imagine of the 21 in the 11 uh, the uh, if we put together the that that bottle neck and the crown uh, if we going, if we put together we we going to have the final crown now we produce that crown in a CAM process and uh, make the uh, 2D and 3D glazing. After that, polish and makeup and again glazing and uh, hand polish. Ever make the hand polish, never, never uh, use the glaze only. Ever you need to. Uh, make the hand polish to control the shiny of the restoration and after that is the placement day here is the here is the crown the initial situation of the case provisional and the final case here it is and look at if we in the in the central papilla look uh, place your attention in the central papilla if you if we make um, uh, a good design of the of the apartment of the of the um, uh, design of the circonium in contact of the patient, if we make a very narrow, um, uh, very narrow um, neck, like a, like a, um, uh, like a bottleneck, and we uh, uh, give a space space to the to the soft tissue, 
result this is going to be uh, it's going to be grow no like this look the central papilla is going to be down here it's growing okay Tarno have risen and happy passing <laughs> okay the next uh, the next one is a, is another uh, another crown in a, in a 14 I, I think so uh, in a single unit implant uh, it, I ever do the same uh, after after the milling after the milling machine I, I uh, make the texture by hand after that uh, I infiltrate a little bit in the occlusal area I going to show you after that and after uh, the sintering uh, the, the zirconia sintering I, I make the um, makeup with the biomic and uh, glaze that, that's all it's very simple like this you know here is a, is a, is a, is a 24 sorry no, it's not 14 it's a 24 and here is in the mouth okay it's integrate again or this one uh, this is our, our lateral is a 22 um, is a, I do the same the same I copy the provisional I copy the emergency, the emergency profile and I take impression with uh, um, with um, uh, customized uh, abatement I design like uh, copy the um, copy the provisional and uh, glassing, texturing, that's all. That's all. It's very simple. Look this. I I going I, I talk to you about that uh, after. Uh, this is the critical contour and subcritical. You know the subcritical contour is concave, and uh, it's very it's like a, like a bottleneck. You know, and uh, the critical contour is the, is when is is where the crown begins to grow uh, from the from the papilla to outside now uh, here you can see the placement of the implant in that 22 another one is uh, is, 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 is it's exactly it's the same is another lateral is another 22 in uh, 11 we have um, uh, another crown uh, I felt the spatic crown in the 12 is uh, in a 22 is a monolithic in a 13 is a is a veneer in a 23 is a, is a veneer sorry but it's the same here okay I'm going to talk about how I do the the texture and, uh, and how I make the infiltration uh, I'm going to talk about that um, so uh, how do I make uh, uh, then the look natural? Uh, I'm going to tell uh, to tell you how I do it. Always try to simply the process, and so that uh, everything is less complicated. But uh, bars, uh, uh, that's cool. Okay, I I only use that bars. No, no more. Um, only. Uh, 0 0.3 millimeters or uh, some uh, um, uh, diamond, bar diamond bars or that score score I think I think is the name uh, I don't remember I don't I don't know the name in English score huh? okay um, I use that uh, that uh, last one for um, so more for, for make more soft the surface you know. Uh, when I carve a, a little bit more than I need, I I use that that score to um, smooth the surface. I'm going to show you. Okay, this is uh, this is uh, the crown uh, that I take out of the milling machine. For me, it's uh, a little bit short. The texture is not is not, uh, not is not natural. You know, I take out the connectors. After that, I use that rubber. is a is a is a bar. is the same that I use in a, for a resin restoration uh, for acrylic, you know. And I customize uh, that 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 bar. I, I with a with a stone. I 
I carve that bar and I make that 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 lines that uh, that uh, things for make uh, for uh, touch the surface and make uh, make uh, lines or make uh, matters or something like that. Uh, I'm going to show you here is the same bar. One is a uh, um, is a bar customization. Customization. Look this. That's a that that's that I talk you to you. This is the crown. That here is the bar. And you can see you how I make that lines. No, and I I can make uh, different characterizations of the of that crown. Maybe if it is a young patient, I, I make more strong lines or uh, I don't know. Uh, Pretty matches is more more is is more easy to see or uh, I don't know. But uh, in a, in an old one is all the surface is more shiny, more uh, more bright. No, that's the reason that I need uh, one bar to make that lines. This is a. In the left side is a jong one. In the right side, uh, sorry, in the left side you can see uh, like uh, a crown uh, uh, directly take out of the milling machine. In the right side you can see uh, after the texturing process. I'm going to show you in a, in a little video. It's only two or three minutes. Here you can see. Use a lateral light to, to see the, the volume because uh, when we use a, we use a fenital light, it's impossible to see the lines because no shadows. Here you can see I put a lateral light. Upon my head, hey God, the mighty lemon tree. What is it? Go tell the devil, the devil's a liar. Go tell the midnight rider. Tell the devil in the rabble, by his side. Tell the mighty God, the mighty God, the mighty God, the mighty God, the mighty God. Okay, you can see it with the lateral, you can see the texture. Some people go to church just to see what I'm like. Trying to make a date with a neighbor's wife. Brother, let me tell you just to show you born. You better leave that woman alone. Go tell that lonesome liar. Okay. This is the final result. When when we need to make a aging crown, I I polish like a mirror, you know, because the the young uh, teeth are um, have a lot of perigmatism and, and lines, and uh, um, and the old one have a very shiny surface. You can see in that picture the young teeth and the old one. And the old one have a, a surface of a abrasion surface. I'm going to do that in, in my restorations. I, I make that that uh, abrasion surface function surface. Okay, this is a young one, a young teeth uh, with a perchymatis that uh, grow in lines. No, uh, that makes um, this is important because when when you uh, make a, a crown for a young patient, the the light. Uh, uh, makes a, a diffuse reflection 
in the surface of the teeth, but uh, in an aged tooth, the reflection of the light is the light is like a, a mirror. It's, it's very very different. It's uh, more polished, more 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 shine. The aged teeth. That's the reason that I going to make a, in a in a aged patient. I'm going to make this uh, abrasion surface, a function surface. I polish better, but I don't do. I polish with a with a rubber. But I, I do only make uh, some cracks, function cracks, uh, with a uh, 0.3 millimeter bar. And this is a di that's a different, uh, young one and aged one. The young one have more texture in the surface, the aged one have only cracks, but no, no, uh, no, no texture in the surface, uh, very, very shiny, very polished. And in the occlusal area, you can see the, um, the abrasion surface. And okay. Uh, uh, in my in my workly day, I used that um, the coloring liquid, the magic coloring liquid of Idite, to infiltrate the structures to make uh, uh, increase the feeling of deep with orange in the occlusal zone. Uh, in a aged crown, I'm going to increase um, the saturation in the cervical area and the gray in the incisal area in uh, John 1 only a little bit of incisal area the blue the orange in the occlusal area uh, incisal gray or blue it depends and brown in the aged one in the pointed point in pointed point in the contact point and uh, shade out or whatever you use uh, shade you say shade 3 it depends uh, you're going to increase the saturation of the medial and cervical zone. This is a jong in Egypt. The jong is only a little bit in the incisal area. I ever do the same. Uh, I'm going to put in the fornos in, in that this is the, the sintering cameo fornos of Edite. This is pre makeup in the top. In the, in the left side, sorry, uh, and uh, in the in the right side, the aged one is more intensive. The color, more saturation, but remember, is a two in two cases, but in the aged is more more uh, high saturation. You can see in the occlusal area, they say the the how to increase the sensation of person of uh, of deep in the with that orange in the in the center. With the uh, coloring liquids, you can you can um, you can do um, uh, different concentration of, of saturation of the crown. This is A2 in in the three cases. You can see it's A2, but uh, the, the first one is A2 pure, like the disc. Uh, uh, the second one is more saturation of the A2. And the third one is with uh, with violet in the occlusal area and uh, more A2 in the cervical zone. Another important thing that we need to 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 think about it is the fluorescence. We need to use uh, makeup, uh, uh, fluorescence uh, makeup, and um, and glaze fluorescence because the natural teeth is fluorescence. Uh, we have more fluorescence in the cervical zone. Because it, and less fluorescent in the incisal area, like in the natural, natural teeth, you can see here is a molar. We have fluorescence, natural fluorescence, in an ultraviolet. When when you when we use the the ultraviolet lamp, uh, in the left uh, you can see a, a crown without makeup, without glaze. In the right uh, is a crown with a uh, glaze, ultra um, fluorescence, uh, fluorescence um, uh, makeup and, and glaze. You can see the uh, zirconiums uh, uh, haven't fluorescence. This is a problem, right? and that's the reason that we need to use a um, uh, 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 fluorescence makeup and uh, glazing. Okay, I'm going to to glaze and and make the makeup in a, in a in a crown in a in a young one and an aged one in a crown in a young one 
you can see it's very easy to make uh, some natural result with very very uh, small work with very, only with uh, uh, very few uh, stains in the in the contact point in the occlusal area or incisal area and the young age, and the aged one sorry uh, we make more uh, saturations more color more 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 high saturation you can see here this is my workly day. Uh, I, I uh, make up with white and terracotta in uh, in uh, in the in the crest of the incisal area, in the crest of the in the, the cuspid area, the blue in the incisal area, brown for make some for some spots or cracks in the surface, like in the aged one. And increase with shade uh, the cervical zone. In occlusal area, I use terracotta and shade dam mix with uh, fifty percent brown to make some spots. Purple grain in, in a sisal zone. You can see here pre makeup after the makeup, and again with ultraviolet. The the here we can see the the fluorescence of the of the of the glaze. Okay, the mica is very important. Use a mica fluorescence. I I'm going to show you after that. I'm going to show you the fluorescence of the the makeups of uh, of uh, of biomic because we we need to to understand which one is more fluorescent. Or which one is is less fluorescence to paint or restorations. Another important thing is uh, how to uh, make the uh, treatment of the surface. When uh, take out of the milling machine, sometimes we have some spots, some connection, or uh, I don't know um, irregularities of the surface. I don't know. We must uh, sometimes we we need to touch with a. With a stone, with a with a bar, a stone, a stone bar, um, a grading and polish. We need to grade and polish the surface. Um, uh, it's very important to use some wheels to make a very shiny surface. It's not not those ones is uh, is my um, I use that bars in my in my lab, but it's not important that that kind of wheels. But uh, is uh, it begins in the in the in the very hard stone, and uh, in the end, the the last one is only for shining. You can you you the, the grain of the um, of the rubber is going to be more fine from the beginning to the to the end. This is the first stage. I use the the stone. Um, I'm grading the surface. And after the grading, I'm going to polish the, with the first one, second one, third one, and the final result is with uh, with the with the last one, uh, silicone rubber, and this is the final result, like a mirror. This is that what I need, because uh, this zirconium is going to be in contact uh, with the, with the soft tissue, and we need that that. Uh, that kind of surface. Look at that, that picture. Uh, here you can see um, uh, the, the zirconium with a, with a microscope for uh, images for uh, are taken with a microscope. The first one is uh, is post sintering. The zirconium post sintering after the milling machine. We touch with uh, some rubber wheels. You you can see I, I show you. Uh, before uh, how to make the texture after the after in in a green stage after the sintering uh, this is the, the first image uh, we have that surface be very careful with the sun blasting many times we do uh, it so uh, that the glaze works better but uh, if we leave something exposed this is the result the second image the second image is the sun blasting that is the reason that I don't I don't like sun blasting. Um, I'm going to tell you uh, how I prepare the surface to make up uh, after that. Um, I'm going to talk about the, the sunblasting and uh, how to prepare the surface. 
uh, how I how, how I prepare the surface. Uh, the third region is uh, is post grinding. Imagine uh, you put that crown in the in the mouth, the, the patient and the and the clinic and the, the dentist uh, uh, touch the the occlusal surface, and he didn't polish. Uh, that uh, that's the image of the of the greeting the the greeting surface of the zirconium is like a uh, uh, sandpaper uh, you know it's a sandpaper in contact of the antagonist is going is a bad uh, is a bad thing the fourth one is uh, polish is a zirconium uh, very very polished that, this is an image that we need in in, in contact of the, the soft tissue of the antagonist of the patient after that, after the polish, we're going to make the, the prepare the surface to make the makeup, and after that, going to glaze, and that's all. Um, uh, when when we uh, choose a, a zirconium, we uh, another thing uh, we have to think about is the different saturation um, uh, that the color has in a, in the same tooth. Like this is a natural example. We have more saturation in the cervical and middle zone and less saturation in the incisal area and occlusal area. In the middle of the occlusal, we have more saturation, like uh, orange that I showed you, I showed you in, um, uh, before. And I'm going to increase the saturation in the cervical zone uh, in the middle a little bit and nothing in the occlusal area. Uh, in the closal area, maybe I'm going to make the stains with uh, white or uh, so terracotta with white or something like that. And we're going to recreate the sensation, increase the, the, the sensation of the gradation of the, of the crown. Look this. This is, um, this is uh, uh, how to uh, compare the chroma value and hue of, the, of that crown. Uh, this is um, uh, teeth of the uh, beta guide in the, in the, in the uh, inferior zone, and I compare with the uh, A2 um, uh, uh, monolithic crown. Uh, if I only see the value like this, I take a punch in a, in a, in a, in, a, in, the, in the beta in the beta teeth and I put in the A2 of the monolithic it's impossible to see it's exactly it's exactly value the value is very very similar what happened with the chroma and the hue are very similar very very similar like A2 like a beta guide you see but in the middle sound and in a cervical sound but uh, in a, what happened in the incisal uh, sound look this this is a D2 of the beta guide. Uh, I make the same. I take a punch in the cervical zone. Uh, it is very similar again. The, the value and the chroma and the hue are very similar, but look what happened in the sisal area. It's more whitish. For my opinion, it's too white. Uh, and that's the reason that, that commonly I use gray or blue in a green stage when the zirconium are in a green stage I, I infiltrate with magic coloring in the occlusal area that's the reason because for my opinion is too bright to uh, to um, uh, high value in the have the high value in the, in the uh, occlusal area in uh, incisal area okay um, when I work in a previous sector, anterior sector, sorry, the optical properties of the Circomium 3D Pro from my detail seems, uh, seems um, magnificent to me. Uh, I, it's incredible. The optical, the optical properties of that Circomium are very, uh, have a very good transmission of the light. It's very strong for the connections of the metal connection for cement. Uh, it's a very good material in my hands. You can see here the translucency and uh, uh, of the zirconium with uh, with a backlight. And uh, now uh, we make with a sterile makeup according for the passion characteristic characteristics. And after that, I'm going to use the three D glaze to make the texture like this. And after that, I grading and polish, and I make the glazing. 
This is the final result. This is the pre makeup and post makeup uh, with a metal connection cemented. Uh, make a hand polish ever to control the shiny of the restoration. And here in a this is the final work. Placement in the mouth. I, it's, it's very nice for me. I, I like that restoration that for the light and the transmission of the light. In a posterior zone, um, I think it's, it's a good material too. But uh, the transmission is the light. The light is not uh, is not in, uh, as important as in a, in, a, in anterior sex sector. Uh, I made uh, commonly. I, I make that that uh, that um, um, makeup uh, makeup map. Uh, I use the shade again in a, in a, in a cervical zone, purple gray purple gray to make a little bit more gray the incisal area. I, I show you before with uh, with uh, with the beta guide terracotta in a, in a, in a brown in a, in occlusal area brown to make some spots white in the in the edge of the of the cuspid of the occlusal area and that's all very simple i told you um what what we're going to do in uh, how to characterize the uh, characterize the previous sector uh, it's very easy. Again, it's very easy. Uh, the texturing is similar, like the uh, lighter zones, but uh, the infiltration, the infiltrations of the with magic coloring change. Uh, look this. I, I use the the disc to make a more independence, uh, independence, uh, independency of the of the of the teeth. Be careful with that. We care. Be careful because uh, the um, zirconium is like, a, like, it's like a, uh, only ceramics, you know, and we need uh, a strong structures. If you, if you use a lot of disc, it's going to reduce the, uh, the, the hardness of the structure. No? Be careful with that. I use again the 0 0.3 millimeters bar for make the texture and my customized uh, rubber. Uh, bar to make the, some horizontal lines and I use that bar to make more soft the surface or more soft and that's the result uh, uh, of the texture of the of the of that uh, anterior zone that's all only five bars and it's very easy uh, take a little care with uh, with a disc to make when when we use in the in a in a in a bridge okay with a lateral light again i put the lateral light in the, in the left side and right side i control the texture and after that i'm going to use the again the magic coloring in a 3d pro uh, only a little bit in the incisal area to to decrease the 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 white effect from for me is to white i repeat from in my opinion i use uh, the shade um, to increase the saturation in the canine i ever the canine increase this the shade shade i in that case or b or c or whatever you use um, i increase the saturation of the canine in the natural uh, natural uh, natural mouth is like this the canine is ever is more saturated have more is more intensive um, I use the growth orange in the in the interproximal area, and incisal. I use in incisal zone. I use uh, only uh, dark gray or light gray, but very few. Only a little bit to uh, decrease the, the 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 value to decrease the value. This is the texturing after the sintering. This is the texturing and the color of the of that ridge. Okay. And it's, it's too easy. It's too easy. You, you only need to practice to make a texture because the millet matching, from in my opinion, is not uh, is not uh, is not so uh, is not like a hand uh, handmade. You know, uh, unfortunately. <laughs> okay, we're going to talk about the lag restorations. What happened with the lag restoration? We are we are going to talk about 
the light restoration now uh, like this B maxillar or like this uh, for me is a very nice material look that uh, uh, we need to have a very uh, exact uh, we, we need to have very exact with the, with the, with the board protocols in a, in a big restorations um, we need to design uh, with the with the face of the patient. It's impossible to to make a static restoration if we make uh, if we make that that design only in uh, in the in the um, in the computer without photos. It's impossible. I need to use the face of the patient to make the and 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 I drop the lines the. The, I drop the, the the lines of the eyes, the middle, the middle facial, the facial middle middle line. I I need uh, to see the lips of the patient. I need to to see a lot of things. I need to work with a with a patient. If if I if I design without that, it's impossible to have a good result. Here you can see, I I now now I can design. Uh, the the restoration looking the, the the restoration in the mouth of the patient that's that's the result of that that work this is a biomic staining laser and 3d pro again i work with the patient uh, i uh, and uh, i need to use an aesthetic and functional plastic proof uh, it's important because we can see the definite work before uh, fishing in it uh, because if you finish, uh, finish it, the, the work uh, without that proof is is a is, is a crazy thing, you know. It's a very big restoration, and you need the restoration before finishing it with a plastic proof. This is before the plastic, in in, in the left side and in the right side with the plastic. We can control the the. the uh, a lot of things that the, we we can control the middle line. We can control uh, the the size of the teeth, the color. A lot of things we can see here. Um, that's the key for a durable and resistant work in a predictable aesthetics. Uh, it's very important to do the plastic uh, the plastic proof. I'm going to talk about now with another case. This is the final result. Another and again is biomic with the staining glaze on 3D Pro. Another one. Um, when I do that type of restoration, uh, after the texturing, I'm going to make the the coloring. After the I take out the the, the rehabilitation of the uh, take out of the milling machine. I I make the texturing and after the texturing, I make the coloring of the. In a, in a traffic job, so I I make the coloring like a bone. I'm going to talk about uh, that uh, that thing in uh, when I'm going to talk about you, the 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 gum. After that, here I make a little a very thin space for the for the gum. You can see here is a very thin layer, very thin layer, and. And in that case, uh, it's a, um, a Hollywood white. Uh, it's a very, very white. It's, it's like uh, it's more white than uh, B1, and a very thin layer of uh, uh, biomic gum and 3D uh, glaze. This is the final restoration. Okay, here you can see. Um, uh, in, in my opinion, the milling machines still do not finish, finish the texture as I like them. Um, I texture is and use a little bit uh, at this. Be careful with this. I, I going to talk. I, I, I talk to you about that. I texturing like this, and after that I infiltrate, and this is the result. I. Uh, I infiltrate the incisal area to to decrease the, the the value and in the interproximal area to increase the sensation of the dip in the in the in the, in the interproximal area. Here you can see the final result with uh, again with the 3D Pro 
and a little work of uh, external makeup and a little work of internal makeup, the metal connections cemented. Here you can see the, that I talk about it. Uh, in the in, in, uh, interdental zone, you can see the, how we increase the saturation to increase the, the sensation of the of deep uh, bit, uh, in, the, in, the, in the interproximal areas. Um, okay, aesthetic and functional plastic uh, proof again. We can see the definite work before finishing uh, and I proof in the, in the passing mouth. Okay. Here, this is a, a very big restoration. Uh, I uh, I make the, the the plastic proof in the mouth of the patient like this. Here is uh, uh, I work with the, again with the, with the, with the face of the patient. I design. You can see I design the structures in in uh, with the face of the patient. I make the plastics. I try the plastics in the mouth. And after the trying, I I try a uh, uh, passive structure, and uh, after that I make the the restoration. I'm going to show you. This is the plastic proof. Here you can see is uh, we going to screw in the mouth of the patient. I printing in my in my lab an aesthetic and functional uh, test. I I print in my lab. I put the connections and cement and proof in the mouth of the patient, and in the in the, in the office in the dental office they can check it in the mouth a lot of things maybe the the middle line or the a little bit long the eleven or the twenty one in that case or inclination of the teeth you you can choose you can you can change a lot of things or make it's possible to make another proof or uh, if everything is okay, we're going to finally to make the, the final um, the final restoration. Here you can see I'm going to change some things. I see all that things in the mouth, but only the function and the statics, not the the adjustment of the inner over the implants. The adjustment we're going to uh, to uh, to see with. Uh, um, with uh, with a metal frame, you, I'm going to show you. I'm going to. Uh, this is the model, the printing model with a replica, the implant replica screen in the model, and uh, I'm going to uh, make the cementation of the interfaces, metal interfaces, and I uh, use the photogrammetry and make an, a passive adjustment, a bar for con control the adjustment. In, in works of that site, I use photogrammetry to know exactly where are the uh, where the implants are in a digital impression. This is the photogrammetry in the mouth of the patient. And we add the photogrammetry taking to the uh, intraoral scanning mesh and we obtain an exact digital impression, you know? And now we we know where are the uh, exactly the placement of the implants, and we make uh, 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 we will check uh, it with a passive test. This is a passive test you can see in the in the in the picture, to passive test to uh, in the upper and lower jaw. Uh, this test is milling, is a milling bar, uh, and we will try in the patient mouth to perform the uh, the, the Sheffield test. You know, here you can see in the mouth, place the place the, that bar and uh, make the verification the verification test to control that we have a very exactly model to design that type of uh, restoration. After that, we're going to print the models and we will uh, we will use the the test to make a model to cement the, the metal interfaces. Because it's impossible to cement in the in the printing model because we have mobility in the in the replica and the re the replica are screwed but uh, it's a plastic model and the replica have a little movement but if we make one model with uh, with uh, with a, with a stone uh, with um, we, and using the the uh, the test we can make a model for cement uh, the metal interfaces. 
After that, we're going to uh, make the, the infiltration of the restoration. This is after the sintering, texturing, infiltration, texturing, every is the same, every is the same. And that's the final result. Again, only with a little bit makeup in the external surface and uh, um, and biomic gun and 3D uh, glaze. Here we have the final restoration with a good passivity, 100% uh, passivity, and uh, we have uh, we have uh, cement uh, metal connection. Here is the final result of two lower and upper jaw of the same patient. Okay, I'm going to talk to you how I stain, make the, 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 the sternal stains and, uh, and how to use the, the biomic gum. Okay, um, the, when, when we uh, make up of the surface uh, of, the, of, the, of a bridge in anterior zone, I ever use um, for make the aloe uh, white and terracotta. I don't like uh, only use white because for me it's too too bright. I I mix with a little bit of terracotta, only a, a small portion. Uh, I increase the, the the gray effect or the translucent effect with a with a purple gray, a blue in the in the interproximal area, uh, in a transition. Uh, in the in the interproximal area, I use terracotta and shade uh, A or B or C or whatever you use um, terracotta and shade to increase the sensation of uh, of the of the saturation of the tone and shade in the cervical area like this and that's all that's all it's very simple. Uh, the yellow I used to to um, recreate the mamelon again under the UV light you can see is without glaze here is with glaze the not remember the natural teeth have uh, fluorescence okay this is my set I use biomic and biomic gum uh, and uh, the palette and I take uh, one photo I talked to you about the fluorescence I take this photo of the uh, of the makeup and under the UV light you can see how is the fluorescence of the of the white uh, of the white makeup of the brownies you have less fluorescence the yellow is very high fluorescence and is is interesting to 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 understand that and this is the glaze fluor is very very fluor is uh, i like so much this this glaze the 3d and the 2d glazes are the same for have the same fluorescence very high fluorescence and that's what happened and what happened with the with the pink one the pink one this is a this is a the, the pink set under the uv light is not fluorescent they have no because why, why? because the, the, the flesh, the, the meat is not is not fluorescent. The, the, the gum is not fluorescent. Have have a, have a fluorescence. I use the palette. In in my case, I use the A2. It's very interesting for me because you can see the, the final color over the the A2 uh, zirconium, and I make again the a fluorescence uh, photo, and you can see the the bright uh, colors of the in, a, in a, the white uh, yellow are very very um, fluorescent have a very high fluorescence look that day I I, I, I I want to show you one case it's a fold case I, I fold that one uh, if you see that uh, that imagine uh, uh, I make the 11 but this is a wrong uh, is, a, is a wrong crown because we use the, the wrong material. This is a, a desilicate, a monolithic only with a stain in a 11. You can see, it's, for me, is a good result. But uh, what happened if I make that photo in black and white? The chroma value and hue is very, very, very good. It's, it's, it's impossible to, to see 
uh, that, that punch, not the 21 in the 11 in the restoration. This is the initial situation. This is the passing to, to when when come to the office, the dental office come like this. This is after the restoration, the final result. But it's, 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 a, it's a wrong restoration. Look at that. Absent of fluorescence. It's a, it's, it's a mist. Why? Because I, I use um, uh, the lithium disilicate without, without uh, fluorescence. I changed that crown for a monolithic one uh, with, uh, with a glaze of biomic and that's all. You can see the difference. Okay, this is my map. I, I, I use uh, for the high saturation I talk about yeah, uh, talk about for the orange one and two and terracotta in the, in the, in the cervical area. Uh, uh, to increase the tone uh, or the shade, I use the shade ABCLD. Uh, this is the um, uh, orange one to or yellow to. I, I show you in the how I use for the yellow for uh, recreate the mamelons or something like that. And in the cold zone, you can use the the blue one, the blue two, the mouth of black or to increase the sensation of gray of translucency. Um, the pink, I, I, I don't like to use the, the pink in, uh, in that zone, but uh, sometimes it's, uh, it's important to use when, when, it's, uh, when we have a, a long uh, crown, sometimes I, I use the pink. The terracotta to increase, I saw you in, in, in other restoration, I, I use the terracotta in a proximal area. Uh, the white, and, uh, I use the white to make cracks or um, some characterization of the of the vestibular zone. Uh, uh, the brown to to recreate some cracks or something like that, and the orange uh, to make uh, some change in the incisal area or in a mammalon. Um, well, I use uh, this is my palette. I use the A2. You can you can buy that one. In A3, A1, A3, A2, I, I think A2, A2 is more. Um, I, I work uh, with A2 more comfortable because it's more. Uh, the, 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 a lot of restoration in my lab are A2. I don't know why A2 okay. And um, this is interesting. In the, in the set, you can find two liquids, uh, uh, coloring um, the, the the coloring liquid one and two. Um, the the one is uh, commonly we use that for uh, make more fluid the the two D uh, um, makeups and the uh, liquid two uh, we use to make fluid the three D past. Um, if you use uh, the liquid two in your surface, in the, uh, 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 this is what I uh, that I was talking about uh, before. How to prepare the surface without uh, some blasting? I use the the, li the uh, liquid number two in the surface. This is the number one uh, without some blasting in the in the. In the picture of the uh, of the right, you can see uh, like um, uh, water drops or, or oil drops in the in the surface because it's impossible to apply the number one. But look what happened with the number two without some blasting. I that's the reason that that I don't use the some blasting. <coughs> Sorry. Uh, I prefer use the number two, and after that, I going to. Um, I have my. I prepare my surface like this with only with um, wet surface with uh, liquid number two. And after that, I going to make the make uh, start the makeup with orange in the inter proximal area. Uh, the shade A B C or D if it depends on the restoration. Sometimes, and in that case, I use the A to increase the the, um, the saturation with the canine. The mouth and the blue in the incisal area. 
uh, terracotta and orange in the in the interproximal and in the canine to make more saturation in the palatal zone is the same not only vestibular teeth you know you, we make teeth and teeth is a, is a, is is a palatal zone is a vestibular zone interproximal you know in the palatal zone I, I use the terracotta and orange and mauve and blue in the incisal area and uh, a little bit white that you can see here I, I use the white to increase the effect the aloe effect and after that I'm going to put in the foreigners I make the first uh, uh, bake uh, after that I apply the 3d the 3d glaze make again in the foreigners the second uh, the second uh, uh, bake and uh, you can see here the difference in the first one and the second in the left uh, in the right side without uh, 3D past or 3D glaze and in the right side the 3D past with 3D past and now I'm going to grading and polish the surface and make the texture and change some things of the of that bridge maybe the contact point or uh, speed or you can change with the 3D pass some things, I polish and I glaze again. Uh, when I glaze I use the uh, the final makeup, I, I use some uh, characteristics, I make some, some little spots, some to correct, I, I, it's possible to correct some things with uh, now with a uh, with final glaze and that's the result here is a, is a final result. This is a little uh, is a orange in the cervical zone with a terracotta and orange, brown to 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 make some uh, cracks or some lines, shade to increase the sensation of the of the saturation of the teeth, orange. To make the mammalons mauve and blue one and two to increase the sensation of the of the translucency and white in the uh, for make the aloe effect in the palatal zone is the same terracotta and orange shade to increase the, the saturation brown to make some spots and mauve and, and blue in the sisal area and white in the um, in the incisal edge, this is um, this is a, a, a resume of the that uh, my my the, my way of uh, in my in my commonly uh, workly day. Uh, I prepare the surface with leaking number two. After that, I make the first makeup. After that, I'm going to texturing with uh, with a 3D glaze, and after that, I is the final glaze and control the shine. Okay, finally, we're going to talk about the gum. Uh, when uh, I I love that set of gum because uh, it's very useful for my 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 workly day. Uh, when we think in 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 a, in a gum, we must think in pink, but of course, we must think in white. When we think in pink, we must think in white. Why? Because uh, the the thing, the, the the pink aesthetics and the white aesthetics are are uh, um, are very very close. I'm going to to show you here. Look the the look the teeth and the in the in the left side and the SP curve. You can see the speaker. The speaker is the same in the teeth and in the soft tissue. Oh, you can show you. And when we we think in the in the pink area, we must think that that that, that soft tissue are over the bone, and the bone have valleys and and have. Um, 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 are valleys between the, the roots of the tooth and uh, have a peak in the in the in the root and valley in the between the roof and uh, 
we we must think in the in the bone when we uh, make the the soft uh, the soft tissue. Um, okay, I can show you. I talk about that. Uh, the the soft tissue is not is not uh, 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 is not uh, um, fluorescent, but the tooth the tooth are fluorescent. You can see here. Okay, when, when I design the, the monolithic in, in a big restoration, I make a, um, I prepare the, the design for make an infiltration, but I never use the pink in a, in a, in a, in a, um, in, a, in my restoration, the, the structure, I never use the pink because the bone are white. The bone of the, of the, of the patient are maybe like a three, a two or a three. I'm going to show you. Uh, I I uh, give a very thin space to make the the makeup and the three D. Maybe half a millimeter is enough. Maybe uh, half a millimeter like this here is only half a um, um, uh, half a millimeter to to make the um, the the pink and. I'm going to show you how I do. This is the set, and um, I'm going to show the air here. Okay, this is uh, commonly the commonly the, the instructions of the of the three D paste that says the one, two, three, four, and the three D and and the two D uh, is going to um, use in a in a three D paste and the, in a 2D past, we're going to use the pink five and pink hair, but I mix, I mix, I, I mix the pink five to increase the pink one to pink four, um, and I I have um, a lot of pinks with with that mix, you know, because you can put up at uh, twenty percent the pink one, uh, uh, sorry, eighty percent percent of pink one with twenty percent of pink five, you're going to obtain uh, more or less a, a, a pink 1.5 more or less you no know? is uh, you have uh, you, I, I do my own uh, my my custom uh, palette of uh, uh, pink uh, aesthetics I'm going to show you now okay that's what I talk about you uh, remember you know, we we use the pink uh, the pink the, the pink uh, gum over the bone. This is the alveolar bone. After the alveolar bone, here uh, we have the roots of the tooth. Here's the free gingiva. And this is the alveolar body. Okay, uh, if we, we, we must to think in, in that because when we apply the, the pink biomic, um, in the free gingiva, we're going to use uh, more light uh, pink. In the barley, we're going to use more dark uh, for uh, cover all the all the restorations. We're going to use another one, and uh, we can recreate um, uh, different uh, tissue, different kind of tissue. This is uh, the relationship between the the, the end of the papilla and the contact point and the crest, the bone crest. When we design the structure, we must to think in that, because the is a is the same distance to the uh, bone crest to the uh, papilla end and to the papilla to uh, contact point. That the reason that uh, in the in the uh, between the canine and lateral are in that place, but between the lateral and the central is more uh, down because the contact point is going to be down and the papilla point is going to be down and the crest is going to be down. We must think in, in that when, when we make the, the incisal edge. We must to, to think in the, in the pink area and the white area together. It's not separate together. Okay, in, in the ballet zone, I'm going to use the pink three or pink four. It depends of the of the type of the papilla. Um, here, I'm going to apply the uh, to to cover all the work with pink two or pink three. It depends. If for the free gingiva, I'm going to use the pink one. 
uh, here in the, in the, uh, you can see uh, in the interproximal area I'm going to use uh, terracotta to increase the, the deep uh, the deep effect and see that imagine is um, uh, the bone is like uh, a2 or a3 you can see is a2 or a3 in that case is a3 that's the reason that I infiltrate my uh, structure in a2 or a3 it uh, um, if the restoration is a1 I'm going to put a3 in my uh, uh, over the the the, the pink uh, uh, structure <clears throat> here you can see is a3 like a school like a, like a, like a bone of the of the maxilla and now this is my custom palette i i use the 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 three uh, the one to five in the top and in the in the in the in the bottom zone i mix with the 3d at 20 percent i um, i use a 3d with a 20 percent of uh, of three uh, and the second one is a, is a number two with a 20 percent of uh, on number two with a, with a 3d pass uh, the number one with a 20%, the four with a 20%. Um, and I use that to uh, compare the color of the patient and I, I can do uh, my own mix of the, um, of the, uh, of, of the gums. Uh, in, in the left side, the patient have more, more um, uh, violet in the in the left side in the right side is more pink you can see okay uh, we can recreate with that with that type of gum uh, more than one uh, two two different uh, biotypes thin and thick uh, in the left side i'm going to do a, a thin biotype in the right side a thick biotype in the thin biotype uh, i'm going to uh, cover the the first one with a pink two, in a, in a thick biotype I'm going to cover with a pink three, because and the papilla is going to be down like you can see, and uh, uh, is more the the the, the thick uh, papilla is more have more is more bloody you know is more more thick more have more. Uh, more uh, soft tissue in the in the thick by in the thin biotype in the left side is more thin more is less uh, we have less um, less uh, less soft tissue over the bone. Uh, after that, uh, we apply the pink three to cover the belly space uh, between the roots in uh, in the thin biotype and pink four uh, one more. Uh, in the, uh, to to cover the 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 belly zone between the root zone. After that, we um, make the the first uh, the first uh, bake. Uh, after the first bake, I continue apply my mix um, uh, of the three D with uh, with a pink three, and for a thick biotype and. Uh, for a uh, for a thin biotype and for a thick biotype, I use uh, pink four with a uh, thirty uh, percent of uh, uh, of um, uh, of three uh, D, and after that the free gingiva, uh, I use the pink one with a three D and pink one in the in the both cases in the thin and the thick biotype. I use uh, in a free gingiva, I use uh, the same the pink one. Uh, you can see in the in the thick in the thin biotype, I I make more uh, more ballets and, and more um, uh, uh, more high. The papilla is going to be higher than in the thick biotype. It's going to be down and and have more is more more um, uh, is more flat. You know, I make a little bit dry. To make the texture, the texturing, because if uh, it's too wet, it's impossible to do. And I, I drain a little bit, and I use to make the, the texturing. You can see here the the orange and skin. I use the orange and skin 
never use that and never put the orange skin in the in the papilla ever in the pali zone or in the alveolar zone but not in the papilla you can see here how in the thick biotype the papilla is going to be high and uh, in the thin biotype is going to be down more more is more more down uh, okay uh, i i going to talk about your century chart uh, uh, in my opinion uh, um, uh, I I change some things uh, like this here you can see uh, the the um, I I change the the heat rate because for my in my opinion is is too uh, too too high I going to be uh, use um, no uh, about thirty degrees no more. Or less 30 or less degrees um, uh, for minute and I change the sintering um, the sintering uh, temperature I, I going to put uh, 715 and 710 for the 2d and 3d uh, the holding time I I use zero zero uh, time zero and a slow cooling for all the rest uh, all the all the programs I, I change because, uh, in my opinion, I I I, I use the um, more um, more slow heating um, for, uh, for for me is safety is uh, in, in big restaurants is is is, uh, is very important to make a, a, a very low increase the. Uh, the 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 rate in the the heat rate very very low and very low is low cooling and um, um, a little bit put a little bit down the 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 sintering temperature look that I'm going to show you this is in in a, I I use a 3D past and uh, put uh, in the furnace uh, like uh, seven. 730 I make the texturing in the left side is with 730 in the right side is uh, 715 you can see the texture in the in the right side in the left side is very shiny I, I don't like it I don't like that because I, I need to uh, use uh, I, I need the 3d past for make uh, texture you know and that's the result here for I think and thick biotype you, if I if I use um, uh, I can see here you can see here the temp in, in 710 in the left side you can see the texture if you put in a 730 with no holding time is very shiny for for me 730 is too high but it depends on your furnace. In my furnace, I use the three different types of furnace: one, uh, uh, one Decema, one Ivoclar, and one um, and one uh, Cameo, uh, one of Idite. And for, in my opinion, uh, for the three furnace, I I need to um, reduce the final temp in uh, seven uh, ten. For my opinion, I repeat. This is the, the final result in uh, for the thick and thick biotype. The thick is more uh, is more ready. You know you, you can see uh, the, the in the left side uh, you can see the thick biotype and the thin biotype in the right side with more with the orange uh, that orange skin and you can see the relationship between the bone crest and the papilla end and the contact point in the thing and the thick biotype is similar it's not the same it's similar but it's not the same okay that's all um, uh, thank you to to everyone thanks uh, so much for for be here um, uh, listening to my presentation and uh, thank you for everybody and that's all thank you so much